Hey everybody, welcome to my video on the solo growth model. This is part one. All I'm doing is talking about capital accumulation and finding a steady state level of capital. In future videos, I might change other features in the model like allowing for population growth or whatever else. Uh, let's start though, let's build the supply side of our economy. Aggregate production Y is equal to F of K, capital, and L for labor. Standard production function, I'm going to assume here that it's constant returns to scale. Uh, for those who don't know, there's a tag up in the upper right. I have a video on it, but what does returns to scale mean? It means if I multiply my capital and my labor by the same factor, it'll multiply my output by the same factor. Uh, this is common if you had like a Cobb-Douglas production function where the exponent's added to one that's an example of a constant returns to scale. Uh, why are we going to do this, though? Well, one thing we're interested in growth isn't necessarily how big an economy is, but how big it is per person. That way we can compare uh, sort of average standard of living across economies instead of just size of an economy. So what if I set Z equal to 1 over L? Well, then y over l would be equal to f of k over l, comma, 1. Which, this is output per worker. I'm going to denote that as little y. Uh, lowercase y is output per worker is equal to some function of little k, which is capital per worker, and then l is constant. So it's really just a function of k now. Now this production function is what we're going to be dealing with most. And uh, plug in a level of capital per worker and you get output per worker. Now let's start building our supply side, or sorry, our demand side. On the opposite end of the world over here, what do we spend our income on? Well, let's say we can spend it on consumption and investment. Investment is our savings. Uh, what's, we assume in this model that we save a ratio S of our income. And this means that our consumption is equal to 1 minus S times Y, which is 1 minus s times f of little k. And our investment per worker is equal to s y, which is equal to s times f of little k. So if I were to want to graph this, uh, this is a graph you'll probably see in your textbook. Uh, it's got capital on this axis, and we've got output per worker on this axis. Our production function, if it looks like this, our investment function is a scaled version of this. All right, now here's, the, here's where this model goes from here. I am interested in this. See, my investment per worker as a function of my production is going to help me know how much capital is in my economy. Uh, now granted, capital doesn't last forever, so we need to uh, account for the fact that it wears out. We're going to introduce an idea called depreciation, and we're going to measure it with, with this delta, delta for depreciation. It's a rate at which, how do you spell depreciation? I don't even know. Something like that. It's a rate at which our capital stock breaks down. And so our change in capital is equal to our investment plus, or sorry, minus how much of our capital died this year. So this piece here is new capital, and this piece here is how much of it has worn out. If we invest more than depreciates, our capital stock will grow. 
And if we don't invest enough to keep up with depreciation, our capital stock will eventually disappear. Okay, so let's let's rewrite this word this then. That means our change in capital is equal to S F of little K minus delta K. So let's draw another graph. But I can put investment and depreciation on this axis, capital per worker over here, we're probably going to see a something like this. We have investment here, SF of K, and depreciation, which is delta K. And as long as we are on, let me shift this a little bit more, as long as we are left of this K star, these lower levels of capital, our investment is greater than depreciation, which means our capital stock is growing. If we are over here at these higher levels of capital, our investment is less than depreciation, which means our capital stock is shrinking. And we expect eventually to wind up here at this level where our economy is stable. It's steady. It no longer has growing or, or falling capital. We call this the steady state. Now, a little bit more formally, a steady state is when delta K equals zero. In other words, when S F of K equals delta K. The point where these two curves hit each other. Where our capital stock per worker is no longer having any reason to change. So if I were to do an example here, let's say we had our initial Y was equal to K to the one half, L to the one half, then F of K is going to come out to be, let's see, uh, K over L to the one half times L over L to the one half. Well, that comes out to be little k to the one half times one. So Y is just the square root of little k. Now, based on that, uh, we could solve for a steady state level of capital if we had information like S and D. Let's say our people save, uh, I don't know, let's say that they save 30% of their income and that capital depreciates 10% per year. And so based on all that, I can solve for my steady state level of capital by setting the change in capital equal to zero, which means S F of K equals Delta K. Well, F of K equals Y. So means S K uh, sorry, to the one half equals Delta K, which means well, let's put it in context here. 0.3 times the square root of k equals 0.1 times k. So 3 equals square root of k. And the steady state level of capital equals 9. That's the steady state capital level. That's the one that goes up here, k star, where anything less than nine units of capital. So let me put a nine in here real quick just for good measure. Anything less than nine units of capital will have, will our economy will have greater investment than depreciation. And so our capital will increase towards nine. Anything greater than nine units of capital will have less investment than depreciation, which will cause our capital stock to fall towards nine. And that's pretty much how that works in a nutshell. So 
And yeah, that's it for this video. In my next video, we're going to show what happens when you change the savings rate or change depreciation. I'll do a little bit on here, but I'll also do some in Excel just to simulate some of these changes. So stick around if that stuff sounds interesting. If not, you know, whatever. Thanks for watching, guys. Good luck econing. Peace out.